The NEC3 has got multiple main options that can be selected. But why has it got more than one option? And why would it be appropriate to choose one of the options over another one? In this video, I'm going to go through each of the main options and I'm going to explain to you how they work and why you might want to choose one of the options instead of another. At Construct Academy, we're passionate about education and the construction industry. So if you're visiting us for the first time today, please consider subscribing if you'd like to know more about the NEC3 and other construction related topics. And if you do subscribe, please remember to hit the bell so when we release our videos, you get that alert. Now let's get into it. Now option A is a price contract with an activity schedule. Now this is the option that the employer would choose if they want a lump sum contract. Now a lump sum is not the same as a guaranteed maximum price. The lump sum that's provided by the contractor is based on the works information and the site information that the employer has provided within his invitation to tender. Now the, in the option A, the contractor gets paid for completing activities or groups of activities as the work progresses. From the employer's perspective, this is the option that provides the least financial risk, as both the financial risk and the quantity risk both sit with the contractor. Now, the exception to this is compensation events, but also any other item that's defined in the contract as being the employer's risk. Now, when the, the invitation to tender is sent out to the contractor by the employer, the employer doesn't provide the pricing schedule. The pricing schedule, which is the activity schedule, is drafted and provided by the contractor. The activities within the activity schedule should align to the contractor's program. And the contractor should also be mindful of this is going to provide their cash flow throughout the contract. So when they decide on the number of activities that's provided, they need to be mindful that they need to be completing as many of those activities within the month to ensure that their cash flow is reflective of the cost they're incurring. From the employer's perspective, this is the one that gives you the least financial risk. So if the design was complete or mainly complete, then you're going to get some cost certainty here. But if your design isn't complete or you know is likely to change, then the contractor will recover these additional costs and the cost certainty will be less. Option B is a price contract with a bill of quantities. Now this is a more traditional form of contract and it's remeasurable. Now in this option, the employer prepares the bill of quantities in accordance with the standard method of measurement or somebody on behalf of the employer does that for them. Now this document is given to the contractor when they're invited to tender and the contractor is responsible for providing unit rates in accordance with the works information and site information that go alongside those quantities. Now as the work progresses, the contractor gets paid for the completed units for each activity. In this option, the employer is taking the quantity risk, but to some extent, they're taking the financial risk. And what I mean by that is if the quantities that they provide aren't correct, then the contractor may be entitled to a compensation event, even if the works information doesn't change. And if this is the case, they would have an opportunity to reprice those activities. Now with an option B, the benefit to the employer is that this provides a consistent tender return and also a suite of rates that provides more accurate cost data for the work activities that will be done. Option C is a target contract with an activity schedule. Now the pricing document in this option is the same as in option A, i.e. an activity schedule. And the activity schedule is provided by the contractor. It includes their activities which align with their program. Now, the difference between this option and option A is the contractor is not paid for the activities within the activity schedule as they're completed. They're paid the defined cost plus the fee. Now, this option is typically selected by employers that want to provide financial incentives to the contractor to achieve cost savings. Now, it does this in two ways. The first way it does it is by the way of pain and gain shares. Now, pain and gain are not terms you'll see within the NEC but they're known within the construction industry and it's a very good way of describing how this mechanism works. So like I say, the contractor is paid their defined cost plus their fee. And if the final defined cost and fee is less than the target, that saving is shared between the employer and the contractor. Now, if the final defined cost and fee is greater than the target, this is known as the pain share. This again is shared between the contractor and the employer However, the pain share is typically capped for the employer 
which may be 120%. This is pre-agreed by the employer and the contractor included within the contract data. That would mean that any defined cost and fee beyond that point would, would be borne by the contractor and they would not get paid for that. Now, the second financial incentive is provided by value engineering. Now, again, value engineering is not a term you'll see with the NEC3 contract. However, what it allows the contractor to do is to suggest changes to the work's information. And if these changes that are suggested are accepted by the project manager and they result in a reduction to the defined cost, the target is not adjusted. And what this means is it potentially increases the gain share that's available to the contractor. Option D is also a target contract, but this is with a bill of quantities. Now the pricing document in this option is the same as it is in option B. The employer prepares a bill of quantities in accordance with the standard method of measurement. The contractor prices that bill of quantities, which then sets the target. The mechanisms within this option and the financial incentives to the contractor are very similar to those that I've just described under option C. The biggest difference between option C and option D is that the quantity risk under option C is shared between the contractor and the employer. And when I say the, the quantity risk, I mean the quantity risk that was used to develop the target cost. But under this option, because the, the employer provided the quantities, the employer is taking that quantity risk. So if the works information doesn't change, but the quantities were incorrect, this may trigger a compensation event for the contractor, and the contractor may have the opportunity to reprice those activities, which may lead to an increase in his target cost. Option E is a cost reimbursable contract, which is typically selected by employers that need an early start on site, but don't have a sufficiently progressed design to allow the contractors to provide a target or a price. Now the contractor is paid the defined cost plus their fee because it would be inappropriate to ask the contractor to take the financial risk of a project that had such an ill-defined scope. Now from the employer's perspective, this is the most financially risky option because there's no defined target, there's no defined price, so the contractor is going to get paid for their defined cost plus their fee. Now from the contractor's perspective, this is the least risky option. And provided that the contractor works efficiently and manages their resources properly, there's little to no financial risk for the contractor under this option. So we've just been through the main options of the NEC contract. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of each of those options and why you might select one option over another. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and feel free to leave us any feedback in the comments. Thank you for watching. It's been great to have you. This has been Construct Academy.